flatten your stuff. Your hat. Your hat. That was our greeting at security at Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Now, here's the, here's the context. We were cramming everything that we could into our trip this, this past week. We were, we were driving across the country. We had initially thought we were going to stop for a couple nights, at least short nights at a hotel. We did not have time. We just kept driving. Then we, we got there. We were up, to, I think, till like around midnight or something. Well, like unloading, and then by the time we got back, had our first shower in three days, etc. It was like three in the morning, then by seven, we're up, go, uh, unloading the truck into storage units, and at, at a certain point, we realized we're not going to make it. We're, we're not going to make our flight. We have just got to drop everything and run, so we left the truck mostly unpacked, and uh, the crew of guys there in Chattanooga un, uh, uh, lo- unloaded the rest of it for us, we, someone was driving us to the airport, so we, we got back, got, got our, grabbed our belongings, got in the car. I mean, we're going as fast as we can. But I don't know if you know this, the Atlanta airport's the busiest in the world. Sometimes it's number two, sometimes it's number one, depending on the week. But it's, let's just say it's the busiest airport in the world. That's where we're going to fly out. It's a two-hour drive with no traffic or accidents. There was a lot of traffic. Uh, we, did, we did pretty much get past that, but as we were watching... The clock, we're like, mm, I don't know if we're going to make it. So we get, finally get to the airport. There's a long, long line of cars that was not moving. So we could not like, get up to the gate. So at a, at a certain point, Steve and I, Stephen and I just go, we got to bail. We jump out of the car and grabbed our luggage and ran like past all the cars waiting to go to departures. We ran, 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 ran. We get to the, uh, we had already checked in, you know, all that modern technology stuff is so nice. So we didn't need to talk to anybody. We weren't checking any bags. So we just ran to security. I'm not kidding. The security line was bigger than the footprint of our church in serpentine, those, those serpentine. I'm not kidding. Uh, going back and forth and back and forth. And we were going as fast as we could and watching the clock just tick, tick, tick. Well, by this time, I think we got into security maybe a half hour before the plane was scheduled to depart. (laughs) That's when they start boarding, you know, typically. Uh, And so we got all the way through all that long, long security line, and we're we're looking at our watch, and we're going, Stephen's trying to make calls. He's trying to figure out what are we going to do. Like, I don't know if we're going to make it. We get up to the the security person who checks your boarding pass and and ID, and and we, we said, okay, listen, we have like eight minutes before our flight is scheduled to go off. We need to go. She goes, nope, y'all already missed it. She said, that scheduled time, that means the time they, that wheels are up. That's the scheduled time. I've always thought that's like when they close the doors. No, the scheduled time, that, according to her, was wheels up. Okay, so now we've gone through this, the longest line ever of just getting up to the, the first person that checks your boarding pass. Now we have to actually go through where they examine your luggage and everything, all that stuff. So we get up to that person. Okay, so now we are like, oh, what are we? We've missed our flight. What, what do we do? Like, I don't even, what? And so the first person we see, we start to put our stuff on the bins, and that's where she goes to, to Stephen, flatten your stuff, your hat. Your hat. And we're like, what? What about my hat? And he had put his hat on the bin of stuff, and she felt like the, the, um, the stuff was not flat enough. And, she, and your hat, your hat. So he flattened his hat. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? She goes, no, your hat, take it. Okay, so he took it. And he said, am I supposed to take out my, my laptop? I mean, he's being respectful and like, ah, am I supposed to take out my laptop? Because at most airports in the world, you do have to. She, she just goes, <laughs> rolls her eyes and just walks away. <laughs> How dare you ask a question like that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And so that was fun. So that that was awesome. So now, you know, like instead of running, we're just like, ah, well, I guess we'll go to the gate and just see what happens. And the security person said, and don't you go out. Of course, yeah, we know that. Like once you've been through security, don't go back out. So then we get up to the gate. And by the way, (laughs) the gate was like gate 19 out of 19. It was 
so far, so long. We wouldn't have made it. We needed a half hour to get from security to the, to the gate. So we finally get to the gate, and we're not the only ones who have missed the flight. There were six people who missed the flight. And so we started talking with the, the gate agent. Now it's not a not a hurry, <laughs> you know, uh, and just asking her about her day. I was, I was proud of Stephen. He asked her about her day and different things, and, and it, it was kind of cool. She opened up a little bit. Well, my day's not been that great uh, because I, I started work at, I don't know, 3.30 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. or something. I was supposed to be off at noon, and now they're telling me I'm not going to get off till 5.30 because we've had people call in sick. And so we're just talking back and forth, and she's calm, and we're calm. And, and when, when she first saw us, she said, oh, you must be the Wakefields. Yes, we're VIPs. You already know our name. No, no, that's not why she knew our name. It's because we missed the flight. And they've probably been calling for, you know, 20 minutes. Would the Wakefield brothers please get up here? And so we finally got up there. But it was, what, what an interesting thing. Like, we're just talking to her, shooting the breeze. And she goes, well, I've got you all booked. You're, uh, you have about an hour wait before your flight boards. Uh, time to go get a meal or whatever. And she goes, now don't be late for boarding. <laughs> We're like, we know. <laughs> Lesson learned, okay? <laughs> like, we got it. <laughs> but what a difference in our reaction, and I might say especially Steve-O's reaction, <laughs> to the two different agents. One was very stingy with her words, with her time, with her instructions, with her care. One was very generous and very giving with her words and with her time and with her care. She could have said, you know, I mean, all the power was in her hand. She could have said, well, I don't know. Let's try to get you on a flight tomorrow. I don't care, whatever. But she didn't. She just, like, got us on the quickest flight. It was almost, like, barely an inconvenience. In fact, we thought it kind of worked out nice. Now we actually have time for lunch. So that was great. Uh, so, uh, but what a difference in those two people. And because of their attitude, it really kind of changed us and changed the environment. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. Would you turn to Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 to 25. These are two Proverbs in the long list of Proverbs that uh, many times they're, they're just one truth after another, not really related, but these two are related to each other. And I want to give you the context. We're in a series this summer we're going through the book of Proverbs in the Bible. It is a book of God's wisdom for your life. And we've kind of broken it up into chunks. And right now, we're in a little mini-series called Essential Mindsets, Proverbs for a Great Life. And I don't know about you, but I want to have a great life. <laughs> and I want you to have a great life. And so many times, it starts with your mindset. Because before your behaviors, before your actions, it's what you're thinking. And that really determines what, how your life goes. So your mindset is so important. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So it is a very powerful how you think. What your mindset, not just a random thought, but your mindset, the trajectory of your mind matters, the, the direction of your thoughts. Uh, we listened to Craig Rochelle, a great leadership uh, teacher and pastor, and he said, your life is always going in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your life is going in the direction of your strongest thoughts. That's how powerful your mindset. So we're looking at essential mindsets that we see uh, spoken about and taught about in the book of Proverbs. And so I'm really excited about this one today. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25 says, give freely. Someone say freely. freely. And become more wealthy. Someone say wealthy. wealthy. It's in the Bible. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Be stingy. Someone say stingy. stingy. And lose everything. Someone say lose. Ah, okay. The generous will prosper. And this word means be enriched. In America today, we see that word prosper and we think, oh, I'm going to have a lot of money. But that is not, that's too limited for this word. It may include that, but that is too limited. Be enriched. The generous will be enriched, will prosper. Those who refresh, and this word can mean drench. So those who drench thirsty people with water. 
Those who drench people with blessing and kindness and goodness. Those who, dr- who refresh or drench others will themselves be refreshed or watered. This is a beautiful biblical principle, and it points to a mindset, a mindset of generosity. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, a mindset of generosity. At different times in, this, in our service today, we've already been talking about generosity. It is an essential mindset for a prosperous life. If you drench others, you yourself will be watered. You will be refreshed. And it's sort of counterintuitive. And so many things in the kingdom of God are upside down. They seem backwards. They seem like that's not logical. That's right. It is God's way. And it's what God has put into the universe and put into our world system. So many things in the kingdom of God like this When you give your life away, that's when you gain life. It doesn't make sense. I know, but it's the kingdom of God. When you refresh others, it sounds like the end of the sentence would be, you'll be empty. But that's not the end of the sentence in God's kingdom. When you refresh others, you yourself will be refreshed. It is how his kingdom works. And I believe that the good news is that God blesses generosity. God blesses blesses generosity. Can we say that out loud? God blesses generosity. And these two verses are, are, are some of the verses, and I'll bring you some more, that point to this truth. If you could grab a hold of this truth, you will prosper. You will. Now, as I've said before, if it's a biblical truth, if it's a biblical principle, it needs to work anywhere in the world. Absolutely. I have seen it work on the poorest soil imaginable. When you are generous, when you bless others, you are blessed. You are enriched. Your life is prosperous in God's way. So why don't we do it? If that's, if that's the, the outcome of generosity, a, a mindset of generosity, why don't we just think generously all the time? Why don't we just be generous all the time? Well, I, I believe there might be many reasons, but one key reason is that we don't fully trust God. Because if you fully trust God to meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, if you really trust God to provide for you, if you really trust God, then it's no big deal to be generous with whatever you have, your time, your talents, and your treasure, because you trust God and he's got a plan. I don't know how many times uh, I, I, I have had a plan for what I was going to do with my day and God had a different plan. <laughs> Uh, but when I've been generous with my time, God blesses me in other ways. So we're not just talking about money out, money in. That is so much bigger than that. But when you refresh others, you yourself will be refreshed. There, we, we, can, we can worry, oh, if I give away, then I won't have anything for myself. Again, that just points to a, we, we need to trust in God. We need to have our faith in God. There are three, three mindsets that I've identified that sort of contrast a little bit. The first one is the scarcity mindset. And different business authors write about the scarcity mindset. It's the idea that there's only a limited pie out there. So in order for me to get my piece of the pie, I need to take it from you. Or I need to prevent, sorry, we have just a little bit of dryness here. Or I need to prevent you getting it. That's the, that's the mentality, the mindset that there's only so much out there. So if I'm going to get some, i got to take it. And it's also the flip side of that is <clears throat> if you get some piece of the pie, then that means there's less for me. So I don't want you to get it. That's the scarcity mindset. We see it all around us. There's another mindset that is usually talked about as the opposite of that, and that is the abundance mindset. And I believe that for Christians, uh, an abundance mindset is a very godly biblical mindset. It is the mindset, it's the mentality that because God is infinite and limitless and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, he owns the planet the stars, the universe, the, the abundance mentality says there's enough of God to go around. There's enough provision to go around. And I, I believe we could end world hunger if everyone just got this mindset, if everyone surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, 
and said, okay, we're going to take care of each other. Done. I believe that there is enough, that, that, that God, uh, God has more than enough. He has abundance. But there's a third mindset. Those two are usually talked about as uh, opposite, scarcity and abundance. But there's a third mindset. That is the generosity mindset. Abundance says there's enough out there. I can get some. Mm, I, I think I'm okay. Thank you. Um, generosity says I am open-handed with my time talents and treasure because God was generous to me first. So abundance says there's plenty out there. Generosity says, and I'm here to share it. And I I believe that God wants to bless not only my life, but to bless others through me. The funnest thing uh, possible is to bless someone else with your time, your talent, or your treasures. That makes such a difference. When When you're generous, you're actually sharing God's resources with other people. We are only stewards. We are managers because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns it all anyway. So God blesses generosity. His principle is when you drench others, you yourself are, are watered. You are blessed. And I, I believe that there's a, a couple of different ways that you could take that passage from uh, Proverbs 11 that we read earlier. And I, I believe they're all true. So first of all, when you bless others, when you refresh others, that is refreshing in and of itself. It, it makes you feel good. That's enriching. That's fulfilling. That's satisfying to bless someone else. But I believe also that the other, uh, the other meaning, when you bless others, when you're generous, God says, oh, I'm going to make sure and pour a little bit more through that person because I see they're a generous person. So I'm going to just bless them. I'm going to give them raises. I'm going to give them, I'm going to prevent their stuff from breaking down. Like God, God will bless you. Uh, so I think it works both ways. Those who are, who are generous will receive. Those who refresh others will be refreshed. That is a biblical principle. When you open yourself up to others, it comes back to you. You're actually shaping your environment. I think back to those two people at the airport. One was creating a whole environment of tension and fear. Well, we didn't want to do the wrong thing. We didn't want to you know, be called out because we put the wrong thing in the bin or whatever. We just needed a little instruction. I looked around. There was no signage. There was no instruction. And, and so by... Uh, that, um, that scarcity mindset of like, I got the power and you don't, that shaped an environment that was negative. And then the, the gate agent just shaped a whole different environment. We were stressed. Six of us had missed our, our flights. Two of those people barely spoke English. I got a little opportunity to practice my Espanol with them. That was super fun. Uh, but we're, we were stressed, but she was generous with her peace. And with her skill, with her talents, she took care of us. It was no problem. And she changed our lives just in a little way, a little bit that day. When you open yourself up to others, it comes back to you. We were friendly back to her. We were encouraging to her. We wished that she would have a, you know, maybe have a better day. Uh, it, it, was, it, it was a cool time. So when you are generous, it comes back to you. That's God's principle. When you take time for others, uh, it, it is just such a blessing when someone is in need of advice or in need of help, and you, you give that to them. You give them your time. They feel honored. They feel lifted up. They feel blessed. Like, it changes lives. And then you, in return, reap an openness from them, a, a willingness from them to share their lives. When you pay for someone's meal or their coffee it, this, or, or whatever need comes up, it, 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 it takes away stress, it takes away worry, it takes away anxiety, and that person now wants to do something back for you. I once read a book called Thou Shall Prosper. It's the Jewish mindset about finance. It's not Christian, Jewish mindset on finance. really interesting book, and I, 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 I love this principle. The basis of friendship is doing a favor for someone. And they said, that is how friendships are born. I do something for you, then you naturally want to do something for me. And then I want to do something for you. And that, that reciprocal helping, is that is how friendships are born. And that is that principle. I'm generous to you. It just comes back. You gain a friend. It, it's so great. It is God's principle. A generous life is a blessed life. 
you want to have a blessed life, be generous. Jesus himself said in Luke 6, 37 to 38, do not judge others and you will not be judged. So he's beginning to say, what you send out comes back. You send out judgment, you get judgment back. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you. This is Jesus articulating this wisdom principle. What you send out comes back to you. He says, forgive others and you will be forgiven. It's generous to forgive. Do you see how we're talking about way more than dollars here? It's generous to forgive. Wow, that's very big of you to forgive someone who has wronged you, hurt you, or uh, whatever, taken advantage of you. That's generous. You forgive others and you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. For too long, we have limited this to offering time or to finances. It applies to finances, but this is a much bigger principle. The principle is what, you, what, what goes around comes around, we used to say when I was a kid. What, what you send out comes back to you. You, you are very powerful in that. You're, you, are, you, you have the power of generosity, and that power can create friendships. It can create help for you in, t- in your time of need. What, what you send out comes back. Would you, for just a moment, think about a recent time when someone was generous with you? Where you were just like, wow, that was nice. Maybe they let you go ahead of you, uh, ahead of them in, in the grocery line. Or maybe they stopped to, to um, uh, just listen and be with you. And it made such a difference. You just needed someone to listen for a moment. Or maybe you were moving and someone helped you move. Like, think, think back to a time when someone was using their time in a generous way towards you. Or think, think back, uh, uh, is there a time recently where someone used their talents to help you? Maybe they fixed your car or they, um, they gave you some advice or helped you fill out an online form that was confusing or, or whatever. How did that make you feel? What, what did that do in you? Or maybe someone used their treasure to buy you a meal or they, like they treated and you weren't expecting to be treated or you had a need and someone helped you with that need. They gave you a car or paid your bill or whatever. What does that do to you? When someone is generous to you, you automatically open your heart to them. It's just a principle. You want to bless them back. You want to thank them. You want to to be with them. You want to hang out with them. Like, wow, you were generous to me. I love you. That, that, that That is what it does to our hearts. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 9 and 10 says, You will always harvest what you plant. This is a biblical principle throughout the Bible. What you send out comes back to you. you the the uh, King James says, oh, you will sow what you, you will reap what you sow. You will harvest what you plant. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. That's the generosity mindset. As often as possible, I want to do as much good for as many people as possible. I want to be generous with my time, talents, and treasure. That is living generously. Acts 20, verse 35, uh, uh, the, the writer of Acts says, You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's the blessing that we've been talking about today. Oh, I, I have my little thing down there. Would you help me with that? Thanks. Thanks. Generosity is a boomerang. I have here a boomerang. It weighs about like seven pounds. No, I'm just kidding. It's made of foam. It's like, it's like a feather. I would like to try throwing it. Oh, yeah. Hopefully no one will be harmed in this illustration. Um, I think that if it did harm you, I mean, if it did hit you, it would not harm you. I'm pretty sure. We tried it out earlier. Okay, so I just want to see the boomerang principle. Lord, let this illustration work. Okay, here we go. 
it, it, it would have totally come back if it hadn't hit the chair. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, shield your eyes. It's really hard to throw it hard. It's just like it weighs nothing. It's like throwing a piece of paper. Here we go. Oh! I just about took out some people in row three. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Let's just hear it. Just but a boomerang, the theory is a boomerang goes out and comes back. And we saw a hint of that in the boomerang. But generosity is a real boomerang. All right? So what goes out comes back. <laughs> now, giving money in order to get money in return, well, not the right motive. That, that, that's not how it works. What we're talking about is a generosity mindset. It's a choice to live in a certain way where generosity is your first thought. And God's promise is that generosity is refreshing. It's refreshing. It refreshes you and it refreshes others in lots of different ways. Maybe financial, if you're giving financial, maybe. But in lots of different ways, God blesses. Now, God's wisdom will always work out. It will work out ultimately even if we don't see it in the short term. We know that. The Bible is true. And someone may live the most generous life and really have a rough time in this life. They, they may. But if their faith is in Jesus Christ, we know what's waiting for them in the life to come. It is generally true now that when you are generous, you're going to get it back. But there is evil in the world. And sometimes it doesn't come back, not in this life. But it will come back. There will be a reversal. In the short term, sometimes it's hard to see. In 2 Corinthians 8 9, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. Are we talking about dollars? No. We're talking about spiritual riches in Jesus. In the short term, sometimes it's hard to see this principle in action. Judas seemed to be on top of the world. One little meeting he had got him 30 pieces of silver. That was enough to buy property in his day, a good piece of property. Seemed like he was doing well that uh, he was evil, he betrayed Jesus, he was greedy, he took that money, the price of Jesus' head, and it seemed like it's working out. Jesus, on the other hand, generously poured out his life to everyone he saw. He fed people, he healed people, he lifted people out of the dirt. And yet it got him crucified. It seems like this principle isn't working out. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. In just a few days, Judas took his own life out of overwhelming regret and, and um, just pain at what he had done to Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead to eternal life, offering eternal life for all who believe in him. So sometimes in the short term, it might be tempting to think, oh, I was generous and, and I'm not doing that great. Hang in there. Hang in there. God's word is true. And you may not be rolling in piles of cash, but your life will be enriched. That is a promise. As God walks through your storms with you. So what's your mindset? Do you have a scarcity mindset? Are you worried? Ah, I don't want to give anything away because I might not have enough. Are you only focused on the short term? Do you have an abundance mindset? Which I think this is a progression. That is, that's a great step to realize God owns everything. God's, God's got it. And he's going to take care of me. Or do you have a generosity mindset? Where you not only believe God owns it all, but that he wants to pour it through you. And he's going to take care of you just fine. You will be enriched. You will be refreshed. You will be taken care of as you are generous. What's your mindset? Would you stand to your feet?
what would you like your mindset to be? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. You want us to have a great life, so you told us how to think. You told us uh, the, the mindsets that we need, Lord God, and we want to have it, your mindset, Lord God, and you have a generous mindset. Lord, I pray that you would transform me and that you would transform us by changing the way we think. Lord, I know that that could be taken two ways. Lord, help us to choose to think differently, but also, Lord, work in us, work in our hearts, work in our minds, and help us to think differently. Let us be renewed. Help us to have a generosity mindset in our lives. Help us to not worry about things, but help us to trust in our Father, our provider and protector. Lord, change our hearts, change our minds, change our lives, and may we be known. May hope and life people have a reputation of being the most generous people around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Start the work in us, Lord. With your head still bowed, still bowed I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus if you have not yet already done that. Uh, maybe you've been wandering away from God. Maybe you're not sure of the status of your relationship with Jesus. Maybe you've never put your faith in him. Well, today is your day. Well, how do you do that? Turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. If you'd like to do that today, online or in the room, would you just raise your hand? Online, I can't see you, but God can. And that would be a signal to me or to, and to God. You want to put your faith in Jesus today. Let me just coach you in a prayer. And I know I'm talking to a lot of believers in this room. Would you pay attention to this prayer? Because you're going to need to pray that with somebody this week. All right? Pay attention to this prayer so you can use it. All right? But for you that are putting your faith in Jesus, would you pray this prayer to Jesus right now? Let's all just pray this together. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, we've got a course we want you to take. So you can grow in your faith. How about you, Pastor Christian? Awesome. I want to have a generosity mindset. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, if you filled out that Connect card, please drop it in the box on your way out. And um, if you are new to the faith, please stop by the following Jesus table over in the corner. We'd love to just give you a gift. It's a book, short book, and a short course on just how to follow Jesus, how to walk in step with him. And please stay, if you wouldn't mind, after service. We're having a short reception for our worship, worship leaders, um, Stephen and Taylor. So just bless them. Say hi. Tell them you love them. Tell them how much you appreciate them. We're going to miss them. All right, we love you guys. God bless. We'll see you next week.